He's Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk. You can also uh, watch him every single night on NBCSN at 5.30 Eastern on Pro Football Talk. He joins us now. Peyton Manning and the Broncos here. Mike, clear up some uh, facts here. Uh, what they're going to do with that money. How big a deal was this that Peyton Manning took a $4 million pay cut? You know, the, the salary cap's $143.28 million this year. We're talking about a fairly small slice of the total spending power of the Broncos. I wonder how much of this was just driven by the reality that Peyton Manning is no longer a $19 million a year player. So he's now a $15 million player for this year, and he can earn back the $4 million. Chris Mortensen had the details. $2 million of it comes back if they get back to the Super Bowl. $2 million comes back if they win it. So he can get the $19 million. He's just only going to get $15 million if they go one and out again in the postseason or if they don't get to the playoffs at all. What do you think they ask him to take as far as a pay cut? I wouldn't be surprised if it was 12 or 13, because there are reports that they tried to, to get it lower. 12, 13 million. That feels about right right now, because there's, there's a real question. What did we see at the end of last year? Was it a guy who just needed some time to recover from a, an injury that hadn't healed, or is it a guy that, that no longer can do what he used to do? But pride-wise, and Peyton certainly got a lot of that, you can't take a 12 or $10 million pay cut. Well, I think a lot of it's driven by the market, too, Dan. I'd be shocked if his agent, Tom Condon, didn't call around to some other teams just to find out hypothetically what would be available if Peyton Manning were on the market. And every agent worth his salt does that. And the implication would be a team like the Texans, for example, that could you imagine mm. what, what, what they would be with Peyton Manning? Uh, regardless of where he is right now, he's uh, considerably better than their other options at quarterback. You know, if, if other teams out there weren't willing to pay him 19, then the question becomes, do your best deal. And the best deal that they were able to do was 15 plus the ability to get four back. What are they going to do with the $4 million? Well, it's not like you can do a ton with $4 million in cap space. Uh, you, you, you've got other guys who have cap numbers you have to manage. You've got... You know, contracts you want to restructure. You've got guys you want to maybe sign. I don't know that all of a sudden, hey, we got this $4 million, That means we're going to keep Julius Thomas. I don't think $4 million is going to make the difference between what Thomas wants and, and what the Broncos are willing but to pay But then why him. take the pay cut, Mike? I, I, I just think, I think it's driven by where he is right now in his career, that it's the right thing to do, it's the fair thing to do, and okay. it's something Peyton Manning has never done, and it's his prerogative to – always grab the last dollar available. And when, when owners act that way, we say, hey, they're shrewd businessmen. When players do, we say, hey, you're selfish. <laughs> uh, Peyton's always grabbed every last dollar, and I think it's just a market reality right now that he's a $15 million a year player at best. Adrian Peterson with the Vikings. How did that go yesterday? Well, it's funny. He issued one statement to ESPN saying it went well, then another statement like a half hour later to ESPN saying that uh, it was good to talk about the concerns my family and I still have. So uh, apparently there's something unresolved. It, it relates, I believe, to Adrian's belief that if he pleaded no contest to misdemeanor charges last November, he'd be able to play last year. And when that didn't happen, there had to be a villain, and the villain became Kevin Warren, now the Vikings COO. Adrian believes that Kevin Warren worked with the league office to keep Adrian off the field last year. I think the reality is the NFL decided this guy's not playing in 2014, yes. and the Vikings either go along with it or they don't. You do it the easy way or the hard way. So I think he's got to work through that, and Dan, just like with Peyton Manning, money's going to drive his bus. $12.75 million. If the Vikings are willing to pay him that, is anyone else going to pay him that? I don't think so. Is the commissioner's exempt list legal? Yes, it is. There's a provision in the CBA that basically allows the commissioner to to put any player on there, uh, and, and it's not whenever he wants to. Uh, that's the perception, but that, that was, the, that was the, the end result of the arbitration after Adrian Peterson's legal case was resolved because he believed, hey, once my legal case is resolved, I come off the commissioner's exempt list, I go back and play, and the NFL said, well, we still have the power to, put, to keep you on there if we want to. So uh, that's something that they, they won with Peterson. It doesn't mean it's absolute, but th there is that provision in the labor deal. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk on NBCSN, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Andre Johnson, I, I thought he, that's, he sounds like a great pickup for the Patriots. I, I don't know, you know, money-wise or if they'd be interested in that, but where's Andre Johnson end up? I, I could see him taking whatever deal he can get to go play for a contender. The, the receiver market's going to be weird this year, Dan, because so many young receivers yeah. now are having an impact right away. It could become a little bit like the running back position 
where teams no longer value veteran receivers. You rip the name off the jersey and you say, is this guy really worth $10 million? And I know the Cardinals did it with Larry Fitzgerald. I think that's the aberration. You're going to have more and more of these veteran receivers getting squeezed to take less. And Andre Johnson's not going to get anything near the $11.5 million he was due to make in Houston this year, but he may not care. He's made his money. Now uh, let's go chase a championship, and he's asked to be released. And uh, inevitably the Texans are going to do it, and he gets to, he's going to get to go pick his next team. Troy Palomalu, Vince Wilfork, do they play for anybody next year? I think Wilfork will. And, and Dan, this is a, a great example of how the Patriots yeah. will get rid of a guy a year too early and the Steelers will get rid of a guy a year too late. The Steelers hung on to Troy Palomalu at least one year more than they should have. And now they're at the point where they want him to retire so they don't have to cut him. Remember three years ago, they, they wanted Heinz Ward to do the same thing. They ended up cutting him, and he looked around and realized he was just going to retire. I think Paul Amalo is trying to process that. Wolfork had a great year last year, coming off of a ruptured Achilles tendon, reworked his contract, and the Patriots decide, you know, we're moving on. He, he intends to play. So I think we'll see Wolfork. I have a feeling we're not going to see Paul Amalo. The Jameis Winston uh trip to Tampa I, I thought was interesting at, at this time of the year it seems a little early for the potential number one overall pick to uh, be visiting or am I wrong there no I, it, that was the reaction a lot of people had Dan that you know we know these things occur but why are they making such a big deal about it why is it happening so early in the cycle Lovey Smith told me at the combine that they view this like a game and they were in the first quarter when they were in Indianapolis, and now I guess we're in the second quarter they're doing their due diligence they're doing their homework they have never had a quarterback that they drafted who signed a second contract with the Buccaneers. So they know that this is their opportunity to finally have a franchise quarterback, and they have to decide between Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, none of the above, trade down, and uh, the, uh, Winston is obviously the guy who requires the most homework. Yeah, I just We got a question mark at the quarterback position for both of these guys. Now, whether it's a big question mark or a small one, I have bigger question marks for Winston, not, not off the field. I, I'm, I was stunned by his lack of raw athleticism, seven and a half inches lower in the vertical than Mariota, 4.97 in the 40, and Mariota runs a 4.52. I mean, I, I, I wonder whether we're going to see more of those Garo Yepremian moments that we saw in the game against Oregon <laughs> when he's going against the best of the best athletes he's ever seen. It, does he have the raw physical ability to survive when he's getting chased by those guys based upon what we saw at the combine. And also that baseball thing isn't going away. The stuff he said to Peter King, I'd be alarmed. If I'm the Buccaneers and I once picked Bo Jackson number one overall and he said, see you later, I'm going to play baseball, I would be very nervous about how things are going to play out down the road with Jameis Winston. I think Winston plays athletic, athletically in games. I, I don't think he's athletic. If that makes sense. I, I think Brady is similar. He's not athletic, but you can play athletically. You can do certain things. And you move just enough. I don't want my quarterback, you know, running. I, I want him to be able to keep a play alive and be like Russell Wilson. But, you know, I, I think Winston has athleticism. It's just it's it's different than what we've come to expect at that position. The most fascinating part of this process, Dan, is when you go up to that next level. You know, there's a ceiling somewhere between – being a Heisman Trophy winner and being a Hall of Famer. And you never know where the ceiling is until you throw the guy into it. And by the time somebody's used the first overall pick, if it doesn't work out, it's, it's too late to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just if – if, is there a guy that just can't miss in this draft? Like you just know that five years from now we're going to be saying, yep, man, un everybody could have had him or anybody could have had him and they didn't take him. I don't think there's anybody that jumps off the page. Otherwise, it would be Mariota, Winston, and this guy. Now, Leonard Williams, maybe, but you just don't know because you don't know until the guy is living the professional lifestyle, making money, or at least more money than he was making in college. Uh, and and uh, there are so many things that go into it, you just don't know. And there's nobody who you look at and say, "How? Why, hey, there's a future Hall of Famer. Yeah. It's just a matter of who's going to get him. The uh, the Eagles, with, with what Chip Kelly did and making it you know, the Philadelphia Ducks here, but <laughs> um, how important is this upcoming season to Chip Kelly? It, you know, is there anything attached with his future? I know that he's now running the front office, but at, at what point do the natives turn on him here? Yeah, I think he's he's really going all in by getting rid in consecutive years of Deshaun Jackson and LaShawn McCoy. Sends 
uh, confusing messages to the fan base, confusing messages to the guys in the locker room, and he's putting a lot of pressure on himself. And I think Chip Kelly's the kind of guy who would tap out before he would get kicked out. And and I think that was that was kind of swirling last year after the season ended, the power struggle with Howie Roseman, who's now out of football operations altogether. I, I, Kelly's got all the power, and I think Kelly would, would pack it up and leave before he'd ever get run out of town. The possibility of moving up to get Mariota is what for Philadelphia? I think that after what we saw with this McCoy trade, I think it's realistic. And and I I asked the league office last night how far into the future you can go with these picks if he wants to <laughs> because he views the he views the draft as a crapshoot. Yeah. He said that many times. There's no sure thing in the draft. Well, he believes Mariota's a sure thing. He's worked with him. He knows him. He can run his offense. How much are you willing to give up? And you can give up picks out to twenty. 17 before the draft, but the moment the draft begins, the moment the commissioner says, welcome to the 2015 NFL draft, the Buccaneers are on the clock, that, at that moment, you can throw in picks from 2018. So the Eagles could go 2015, 16, 17, 18, picks from any round in any of those four drafts once the draft begins to try to move up to get Mariota. And, I mean, you know, Kelly does it his own way, yeah. and it won't surprise me if he tries to do it. Great stuff, Mike. Thanks for joining us as Bye. always. All right, Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk. You can watch tonight, 5.30 Eastern, BCSN.